Hello, my name's Glenn Vickery and welcome to my YouTube channel Kiwi Bushcraft and Survival and today we're going to be covering another tree, a New Zealand native tree um, called Tarata. Uh, it's one of my favourite trees um, and uh, we'll pretty much get into, get straight into it. It's also uh, of the family name called Pitosporum, but uh, let's get into it. Okay, so here's the tree here, okay, it's a really, really nice tree. Um, it's uh, quite quite large, okay, they can grow quite big. Alright, here's another one over here. All right. And uh, we'll zoom in to the uh, to the leaves a bit closer. Okay. Here's the leaves here. These trees are everywhere. Okay, now they've got like this yellow uh, white um, sort of midrib, okay? And um, it makes them pretty distinctive, and they've got like black, dark stems, okay? As you can see here. Underneath the leaves, it's quite um, sort of lightish, a little bit more lightish, but you can still see a, um, a pretty decent stem, white stem there, okay? Um, what's one of my favourite things that I like about this um, tree, uh, Tarata, is the fact that you can crush... When you when you take the take the leaves off, okay, and you crush the leaves, okay, and you put the leaves, you put it up by your nose, and you smell it, it's beautiful. They smell like lemons, okay, and that's why the the common name for this tree is called lemon wood, and it's it's just beautiful. In the old days. Mouldy uh, would um, put the uh, leaves, crush leaves, um, into um, make in, in with other plants, um, sweet smelling plants, and make scent um, sachets or uh, like a scent bag, and they'd wear that on their body around their neck um, because back then they didn't have like deodorants um, and deodorizers and stuff like that, so they'd they'd, they'd They'd use the natural bush, okay? So you crush it all up, and then you you smell it in the... Um, it's beautiful. It just smells like lemon. Um, the other thing they would do is um, cut a vertical... Um, cut a vertical cut into the... Uh, into the actual trunk of the tree like say down there, cut a vertical truck cut there, and the sap or the gum that would come out, they would mix that with um, tītoki, okay, tītoki, the seeds of tītoki, um, and another tree, um, uh, I think, it, yeah, ko, kohaia, uh, which is um, the New Zealand uh, passion fruit, um, and we'll, we'll do uh, um, the New Zealand passion fruit um, another day. Uh, Titoki, yeah, we'll do Titoki as well another day. Um, but the fat and the oil, um, the, the, sorry, the, the, the fat from um, birds when they're being cooked over a fire uh, would be collected and sometimes the juice or the gum would also uh, be added to that. I think probably just to add a bit of um, flavor or scent to it um, and sometimes even the leaves would be um, crushed crushed and um, added into the fat as well of the uh, birds um, but more the birds a lot of the time were um, uh, when once they were cooked they would be soaked in their own fat or dunked into their own fat and completely sealed in fat and they'd be left in a gourd wrapped up and put away for um, times of hardship like say winter when there wasn't much food around and obviously the leaves would um, that would be mixed with that fat would um, add flavor okay add flavor to the um, to the birds when they were eaten cooked and eaten um, but yeah this is um, one of my favorites um, Back in the old days as well, uh, when horses would have um, 
uh, sores from the saddles on the, you'd have the saddle on the horse and they'd get uh, sores or saddle sores, they'd be called. Um, if uh, a lot of people would uh, get the, um, the leaves, chew it in the mouth and then apply that chewed up leaves to the saddle sores to um, help heal the, uh, the sores on the, um, the horses. Um, now probably something I haven't tried yet but uh, it's something I do want to try and that is the, um, the, the tree itself, the, the wood is um, very very hard, it's a very very hard wood and it's also elastic, got a very, it's a, an, got a, it's elasticity, good, good elastic, a, a good elasticity, okay, so being a hardwood with good elasticity, um, it's got the potential to be used as a bow, to be turned into a bow, so to make a bow and arrow, okay, so, um, that's pretty much all you need. Um, something that's hard, um, you know, it's it's and it's it's got good elasticity. Uh, as far as the durability goes, I'm I'm not too sure about the durability, um, but it is tough. Okay, it is very tough. Um, how it goes in when it's raining and things like that, I'm not sure. But uh, normally you can't get a a, a tree or a timber. That does that does it all, okay? That that's strong, tough, has the elasticity in it, and it's also durable, okay? So whether this one here is durable or not, I'm unsure. But this is probably one of the best trees that to look at to maybe making a bow. Another one is Kanuka, and we'll cover that another day. Um, and there's also another one I, I can't remember the name of it right now. It's sort of gone off my uh, out of my memory, but it's um, it's something I want to look at as well. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, I hope you uh, like it. If you get the opportunity, try try these leaves, um, crush them up, and they smell absolutely fantastic. Oh, welcome back. Sorry, I forgot a, uh, to mention a couple of important things about the Tarata tree. Um, number one, um, Tarata, the sap from Tarata that I mentioned. Um, is good in one way in the fact that you can mix that sap with puha sap, the sap from puha, the white sap, and um, that sap that can then be chewed, the tarata and the puha sap can be chewed together, and that sap, that, that chewing gum uh, or bubble gum, um, probably more chewing gum. Uh, can last for uh, generations, okay, and uh, in the old times it was passed down. In fact, I think there was one um, that had been passed down from generation to generation for over a hundred years, um, and uh, that was lost in a uh, battle down in the Waikato region. I can't remember too much about it, but, um, and it was highly prized by the uh, Fano down there. Um, so, uh, it's something that I've never actually tried, but um, when I get time, I'd, I'd love to try that and see how it goes and what it tastes like. I'm guessing it would taste quite lemony um, because the uh, leaves of Tarata uh, have that lemon flavour or smell inside of it. Um, another thing, however, with the sap, okay, uh, the for, uh, Tarata used as a firewood is no good. Uh, it's it's not a very good firewood. Um, uh, so if you're out in the bush in a survival situation, don't use a uh, tarata to try and uh, make a fire and survive because you're going to have a lot of trouble um, starting the fire. I think that would be more likely due to the uh, amount of sap that's in the uh, wood, um, so not a good choice in firewood. However, just a couple of things I uh, had to throw in there that were quite important uh, to a uh, um, survival situation. Okay, thank you. Uh, tarata. Um, like, share, subscribe, and um, please join me for the uh, the next video. Okay, thank you.